morning to all of you. Uh, thank you, OGTC. It's always a pleasure to be back uh, at the conference and great to see you all. Great to see also uh, many friends from overseas uh, who agreed to be part of this, uh, uh, this conference. And again, we look forward to the interaction. And I hope the conference, uh, as uh, some of the previous speakers have shared, would leave us with some ideas which we can think about, uh, start implementation, and get uh, uh, progress happening in, in variety of areas which could be of our interest. Uh, I sort of thought of uh, speaking this year on overall competitiveness enhancement strategy and really looking at how the Indian manufacturing, uh, apparel manufacturing sector can benefit from the opportunities uh, that are available to us. Uh, I would speak about three areas, basically what the opportunity is and some of the previous studies uh, which talk about opportunities, we look at some of the data. Uh, we also would need to look at what are the challenges and some interesting perspective from the buyer's point of view has come. We'll look a little bit more into that. And then uh, look at what the, what the important steps are there, what are the important action points as a part of the strategy which will help uh, Indian apparel industry improve its competitiveness. I won't be focusing much on the, uh, on the marketing side because there are other experts who will be able to take care of that part as such. But I firmly believe if the manufacturing sector is competitive, then marketeers will be, it will be easier for marketeers to sell the merchandise, get more business, get more investment, and, and have a vibrant, uh, vibrant industry, which will be good for everybody. So let us look at the opportunity. And I'm, I, I told Prashant that I'll be using some of the data uh, from Wazir Advisors. Uh, so we're talking about exponential growth in the apparel market. And the good news is that large amount of this growth is going to come in BRIC countries that is Brazil, India, Russia, and China. So we are part of the growth story. We are part of the growing world. That's not the case in other parts of the world where either they are stagnant or, or the, the economies are going down. The combined uh, market of uh, China and India is going to be bigger than US and EU. This is projected for 2025, which is, again, a great good news. With this kind of a market growth, there's going to be a supply gap because China would produce more for its own population and its supply to international clothing trade would go down, which creates a supply gap or a high demand, which also gives a lot of opportunity. Intra-Asia trade will increase, and that's a, that's a phenomena which must be looked at, offers great amount of opportunity. And to be able to clothe these people in Asia, a lot more production capacity will be required, a lot more investment will come, where will that investment come is a question we need to look at. China and India put together would almost contribute to 35% of the global market share at that point of time as far as the market is concerned, which again is a great opportunity which needs to be seen. It's 2025, but if you'd really be a significant player to get gain from this opportunity, we got to prepare yesterday. So, you know, it's, 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 one doesn't have luxury of time uh, one has to really, really work hard to develop a strategy and implement that. Let's also look at uh, the scenario that the projected market is going to be 2,000 billion U.S. dollars. We also have exports, sorry, 200 uh, uh, billion dollars. We've got also exports. And if you look at the projected growth of manufacturing in India, there's going to be tremendous amount of manufacturing shortage. The manufacturing capacity is limited and who will produce and who will fill this gap is an important question. How is industry gearing itself? And will the industry be able to gear itself to meet that market is a question. The market would be here. The consumer would be here. But who would retail and who would have the manufacturing job, again, is a question. And that needs to be seen. Because the Indian and Chinese, both markets, will be attractive. And many countries in the world including countries in Africa, would be really looking at this market as a very, very uh, lucrative market as such. Quick look at the uh, export statistics and how the uh, growth rates of various countries are. And of course, as Mr. Mathur was saying, that we have done reasonably well, and we can be happy about it. If you look at Bangladesh, of course, has been galloping and really, really clocking a great amount of growth there. If you look at the next slide, the scenario changes. Because the previous slide, 
does not have china in picture the moment china comes in all those other figures start looking very very small now of course china is slowing down but even a slowing down china is still adding great amount of capacity and great amount of business to the world as such so that needs to be again understood and seen how it's going to move now let's move on so basically we are saying that there's a great opportunity big opportunity available for everybody it's not going to be restricted to only india or china or bangladesh so it's, it's for everybody to work upon now quick reality check and this has been talked about and there are a lot of papers which will be talking about this but one of our major challenges availability of skilled labor most of the factories are running at 60% capacity 50% capacity 70% capacity machines are vacant factories 500 machines only 300 are working because the workers are not available how are we going to address it fabric quality is one of the major problem in the, again been discussing with ogtc members other manufacturers in india i think fabric quality is one of major concern for us when we go to mills koi sunwai nahi hai nobody is willing to really interested to listen reliability of supplier and again uh, you know the the question was brought out will you be able to supply in time will your supply chain partners be able to supply goods to you in time so that you are able to service your customer raw material availability increasing cost in the whole thing and of course sometimes fluctuating on unpredictable government policies that make the task or or a life of a garment manufacturer or exporter uh, difficult let's look at okay how do the international customers look at us it's a time for a reality check sometimes you'd like to believe that everything is fine and we are in a you know hunky dory all fine world but you know sometimes we have to ask some hard questions and listen to customers and we we heard from tesco's point of view so some of these indicators are from a presentation which was done at cia conference some time back by vice president of vf corporation right and he talked about some of the indicators they had done the internal survey of sourcing uh, sourcing directors sourcing managers asking them how do they look at indian uh, apparel manufacturing sector as such and various parameters cost okay some of them said that yes india is cost competitive some of them said no but all together is okay on time delivery needs major improvement quality is good but can be much much better so we can't be just happy with where, where we are speed to market certainly needs more improvement if you to capture higher value business and retain the business what we have efficiency came out very very strongly is something that needs significant improvement reliability there is a opportunity for improvement i can give a sugar coated coated pill or i can just be very very blunt but yes there is a great amount of opportunity for improvement product development we are very good but we can be excellent so there is an advantage that really needs to be nurtured and really create greater value out of that so that is an area where we can really further further move on there have been a lot of efforts from the government and again mr mathur talked about this so i'm not going to spend time on this so there's a fair amount of effort in terms of creating uh, techno parks in terms of uh, skill development schemes and things like that and i hope we will be able to achieve our targets one of the difficulties with our plans is that very seldom do our plans come true so you may have a beautiful plan but if you only achieve 25% of that or 40% of that or even 70% of that still like a garment factory losing 30% of its capacity if you don't achieve the plans then there's a problem and we will not be able to achieve our targets okay so now in that background what is that strategy what the apparel manufacturers can do and how it can help is a question i am coming to and we are concentrating on the man improving manufacturing competitiveness the areas i'll talk about is controlling cost of quality strengthening hr systems lean thinking waste elimination i implementation company wide training supply chain improvement and excelling in product development of course this is a wide theme but i'll touch upon them and share some case studies in terms of how it can help and what can be the impact on the sector now some of you have heard about my my research on cost of quality what it concluded that average company in india average apparel manufacturer in india lost 14% of sales on account of cost of quality the good news was that there were companies top 25% whose cost of quality was only 6.1% that means the average company can save about 8% of sales should their right first time processes including fabric procurement becomes better and that's a great amount of opportunity and lot needs to be done there a lot is being done but that's not enough that's not enough to really make us a very very vibrant and competitive country now 
how much it is in our individual enterprises. There are very few companies which are measuring cost of quality and trying to work out strategies for gaining your own money going down the drain. Excellent area of opportunity, any effort on here are, have tremendous around, amount of ROI. Next, strengthening HR systems and worker engagement. A lot can be done. There are a lot of speakers who are going to talk about it, so I'm not going to get into details as such, but I find that a lot needs to be done here. HR is mainly payroll accounting and nothing more than that. Barring exceptions, but it has to happen. What I'm saying is this has to happen at an industry-wide level. At least half of the industry goes to this level, then the, then the picture of this industry is going to be different, and the sector's competitiveness is going to be different. Strengthening industrial engineering, a lot has been talked about it. A lot needs to be done, and a lot of improvement can come. Many companies have invested into training. The managers are well-versed with all these terminologies. They have eyes 20, 30, 5, depending on the size of the company. But when you go to shop floor, the manufacturing practices are more or less same. Only you use more jargon. And sometimes you sort of lose on fundamentals as such. Adapt lean thinking, very, very important. Again, this can be from a very basic level of understanding principles to world-class manufacturing journey. It takes time to go there, but adopting lean principles will definitely, definitely help in terms of improving the lead times, in terms of improving. We have a case study of, of Ludhiana, and a, a t-shirt manufacturer for a, for a leading uh, Indian brand was able to save 10 days on the lead time through WIP management. And the working capital also come, came down, and they really had tremendous amount of productivity improvement as such. So these principles can be used by small as well as large companies and can give you overall business benefits. I'm going to share one case study of a project which has looked at most of these strategies combined together and it has been implemented in India and Bangladesh. Uh, we also fortunate that we had Tesco as one of the partners here. We had New Look, Sainsbury's, Mothercare, Arcadia, Marks and Spencer. The project got over in the month of April this year, so I have now closing, closing report and closing data. Some of this was presented last year also as an interim. Okay, what are the results? So this is about 68 companies between India and Bangladesh. Efficiency on an average in India is 26.27%. Bangladesh is 18.26%. Let's concentrate on India. Quality, the rejection rates are down by 26.19% across the companies that participated from India. If you look at it from, from the point of view of cut to ship ratio, improvement of cut to, cut to ship ratio by one percentage point, a lot of money. Worker migration, we're talking about workers not being available. Worker migration on an average came down by 26 percent. Absenteeism came down by about 26 percent, which gives you additional capacities from the same workers. And interesting and a positive side that workers earning per hour went up by about 8 percent. So that's what the project, benefit for business and workers. Business benefits, so that workers also benefit, so that buyers also benefit because you have now better delivery performance, better outgoing quality, efficiencies are better, your cost competitive, your profits are better. Training, what is important that we must have company-wide training. You know, uh, the, the large apparel manufacturing companies in the Western world had actually positions of director training in the organizational hierarchy. That was the importance given to training. Most of these large companies trained their own sewing machine operators, did not depend on anybody, because they wanted to have customized training for the need of the company. A lingerie manufacturer would, would train their people for their own operations, and did not depend on anybody else. I firmly believe any factory with more than 500 workers must have an in-house training cell, which works on a world-class level, can be excellent ROI. You don't have to don't have to even think about it, okay? It has to be need-based, so you don't, don't unnecessarily train a person with something it's not going to use. Need-based, supervisory training is important, and in this area, 3G, 3G uh, tailor training systems has done some wonders in this part of the world, and we would have a case study by Mr. Devdas from Madura, who will be presenting on uh, the application of our methodology and how it has worked. Recently, a company in, uh, in Bangalore, again a large manufacturing company, introduced the system Two, two months down the line, four new lines with all new workers are running. Two out of them are running at about 55% efficiency. Two months down the line. Out of four, two full lines, all new workers clocking 55. Rest two are building up. 
they are very, very happy. They want to go for another four factories, again apply this methodology. So it's, it's important that we take initiative, but we must implement them in pure scientific way and not dilute methodology. Because if you dilute met methodology, you're not going to get results. Let's move further. Yeah, so, so the mantra, which I think I would like, and I would request really urge people to ponder on this. My mantra is, make your people capable of earning more through training, through skill building, so that the enterprise can earn more. Only if the workers earn more through output, through productivity, can the enterprise earn more. And if you accept that as a, as a, as a, as a mantra, then invest into training. Make them more productive, make them more valuable, reward them for that value because they're going to generate more value. So that really has to be, has to be seen because that way you can take care of almost 30% worker shortage because those people can actually produce 30% more pieces. Engage with, so engaging with supply chain partners is also very, very important. But this can happen when your own enterprise is much, much stronger, you have implemented your systems, you believe in the systems, you might be able to guide now your suppliers about how to implement lean concepts, how to implement productivity improvement, how to implement quality improvement. That's what globally the leaders are doing, training their supply chain. Now, some of our supply chain partners are big. Maybe in size they are big, but in systems they are not. They may not. It might be a value of partnering with them, sharing some of these concepts that you have a much stronger uh, supply chain because many of our factories we've seen lines are waiting because the fabric is not available. Now what can your production plan do? You know workers are just waiting. Excellent product development, very very important area. A lot of technologies are available. Mr. Ram Sarin is here and he's been doing some great job in the area of, of uh, helping the companies improve the sample conversion rate, development conversion rate. And a lot can happen because you're concentrating on the manufacturing lead time which is only about, say, uh, 30, 30 or 35%, but not really looking at the 65%. Of course, this is, a, this is an overall observation. A lot of companies are doing a lot of work, but a lot needs to be done there. And should that happen, a lot of improvements can come in terms of reduction in lead time, getting a higher order convergence from your samples, getting, breaking into new markets. And what I feel is these new technologies are, are a present and future. It's high time companies look at them seriously, evaluate, and start adopting them. Because these will be game changers. This will help the companies suddenly go to the next league as such, where you are, you are, you're, not, you're not touched by the competition. So what this can do? If the strategy is implemented well, lead time reduction could be 10%, could be even higher, 20, 30, depends what you're aiming at. On-time shipment rates will improve. Product development and order conversion rate will go up. Absenteeism, migration, social compliance will be better. I've shown some numbers. So again, I'm not speaking out of the hat. Quality would be much better for the company, for the customer. Material savings could be about up to 5%. And there are a lot of studies, and a lot of OGTC members have experienced this. But a lot of potential still exists. Increase in efficiency and productivity. Average factory, about 30% efficiency improvement is possible. One year journey, about 30%. If you're above average, maybe lesser. If you're very, very close to excellence, even lesser. But if you get that much, it's worth it. And if you put all this together, my estimate is profitability of a garment firm from a current profitability can go up by about 70%. What does that mean? Overall productivity improvement in the sector, if you're able to implement it sector-wide, about 30%. That means you can export about 30% more with the same workforce, as long as you're able to get the orders. Potential additional exports of 4.10 billion at the industry level on current base, and about 70% increase in profitability of the sector as such. What does that mean? Now you have a competitive apparel manufacturing sector, which probably now is ready to take on that opportunity of that business, because only if the manufacturing sector is competitive will the investments come in, investment from domestic investors or international investors. But if it is not competitive, then investments will not come here. Investments will come somewhere else. The goods will be sold here. The Indian consumer will get the benefit. But Indian manufacturers and Indian public at large might not get 
the amount of employment generation what it deserves. So from that point of view, a lot needs to be done and this strategy needs to be implemented well. There are just three recommendations I have. The third one is again Mr. Mathur talked about. A lot of support is coming in for the, for the skill development. So we'll understand the nuances of that. But yes, what is important now is encourage the apparel manufacturers to go for a manufacturing excellence programs. Through government policy, we must have support for the companies that really want to go for manufacturing excellence program because they will have to invest and they will have to go for a medium term program, maybe about three years of engagement and really working. Because you're talking about now not small changes, not small gains, you're talking about big gains. It's time probably to look at what is the cost of quality in garment industry now because my previous study is almost now 10 years old. We need to understand what's happening at the industry level, what is the improvement potential. Should that be done, again, a lot of insights will come which will help the industry move forward. So with that, I would like to thank all of you for your, your uh, patient listening, and I hope that I've shared some ideas which make some sense and <coughs> they can be implemented upon. Thank you very much.